Hi, it's Jared and Adam here from Raiden Hall Newtown. This is the first in a series of video vlogs we'll be doing this year. We will be discussing changes in landlord and tenant legislation and other topics that are important to tenants, landlords and those thinking about an investment property. The topic we're going to cover today is unfortunately an unpleasant one. It's about domestic violence and the changes in laws that came into effect on the 28th of February 2019. So Adam's going to explain to us what are the changes, that's. Well, Jared, tenants that are or find themselves in circumstances of domestic violence can now terminate their tenancy agreement immediately. Um, and to do so, they have to issue us or their landlord or landlord's agent with a termination for domestic violence notice, um, as well as provide one form of evidence. So what are the forms of evidence? So there are four that, that, that um, currently exist. So one is a certificate of conviction for the actual domestic violence uh, episode or so situation. Something from the, the courts. Yep, most yep. definitely. Um, if children are involved, then um, a family law injunction. Yep. Um, there is also a provisional interim or final domestic violence order. Yep. And uh, the last one is a prescribed form from a medical practitioner. So they need to have a notice and one of the four forms um, of evidence and they can terminate the lease. So if they do terminate their lease, Adam, what sort of notice do they have to give? Well, it can be terminated immediately. So um, the only thing that's th that the law stipulates is that they have to provide a termination date on their notice, um, but that can be on the same day as they vacate the property. Okay. Is there any penalties or fees? So a landlord's all of a sudden got a vacant property. Is does the landlord have any way of charging back fees or anything like that to the victim? No, not to the victim, none at okay. all. Um, so that means no break lease fees, no costs involved when advertising or remarking the property for new tenants, no loss of rent, uh, nothing at all. So but can the landlord challenge the whole domestic violence notice that they've served? The landlord can go to tribunal and challenge, I guess, the validity of the served notice from the tenant, um, they can't actually challenge the contents of the termination. So, that, so they, they can't argue about the domestic violence, but they can, act, they can actually challenge the, the way it was served. So more of a technical, te they can challenge a technical aspect, but they can't cha challenge the actual contents of it. Yes. Um, domestic violence, obviously there's going to be a greater risk of uh, damage to a property, you would expect. So can the victim who's on the lease be charged for repairing the property if that has occurred? So the actual victim of the domestic violence can't be charged with anything. We can't get any costs out of them. They're not liable to pay anything for damages. Um, yeah. However, in a situation where you have um, the tenant who is the offender in a situation, then we can most definitely go through the tribunals to try and recover costs for damage. Um, if the tenant is his partner is or the offender sorry is not um, a tenant of the property then a landlord will have to go through the local courts okay so if i'm a landlord i'm thinking that uh, going through the local courts is going to be quite a challenging process to someone that's an offender in a domestic violence situation yeah. would if i had insurance would that cover it for me or well at the moment we have to understand that the law is only uh, changes are only recent so uh, insurance companies are under stress at the moment to try and make sure that their policies are going to cover um, everybody in these types of situations from from those that we have spoken to um, they're working towards that they're saying that they're currently covering people under the um, uh, under their current insurance policies uh, but like always I do implore people to take a look at their, po their own policies make sure they are covered speak to their the, the relevant insurance companies that they're with um, to make sure that they are. And so if you had an uh, insurance policy that covered malicious damage, would that be the sort of way you could maybe get yeah, a coverage? Yeah, most, most Okay. Definitely. And obviously your tenant's going to vacate that's, um, and look for a new property. What if we get a phone call from someone that asked for a reference about them or asks anything about the situation? What are we as agents allowed to dis discuss or disclose to any future landlord or any future agent? Well. You know this only too well that at, at the time of when we're looking for new tenants, we call and, and reference checks to happen. And one of the most common questions is, what is the reason why a tenant is vacating that that property? Um, in in situations of domestic violence, that question can't be disclosed or that can't be answered. So we can't disclose that information to any future landlords or landlords agents. And what about if it's a situation where there was two or three people on the lease, and one of them 
was a victim, but the perpetrator or offender wasn't actually one of the other people on the lease. They mm -hmm. were just maybe you know, they, a boyfriend, girlfriend that lived apart. So, mm -hmm. um, what is there any responsibilities, or what what can the, the other two or the, the the other remaining tenant? How do they go through this situation? Like, what 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 happens to them, and what can they do? So, a couple of things, Jared. Um, the remaining co-tenants will have the choice if they'd like to stay on, then they can do so. Um, however, they can also apply to tribunal to have their own tenancies ended if yep. they just feel the stress of, of taking on that lease is too much for them. Um, what they can do in the first two weeks of the victim vacating the property is that they can have their rent portion, so the rent that they pay, um, as the only rent that they pay for two weeks. So the if, the, if it was three people in a household and the rent is $900 a week and they're all paying $300 a week and one of them moves out because they've been they've terminated their lease, they've given their notice, they've uh, given their evidence and they've moved out and their portion of the rent was $300 a week, the remaining two only have to pay $600 a week for the next two Correct. weeks and they have to either find someone else or they apply to the tribunal to terminate or Correct. that's sort of what happens. Okay. Yeah. Well, lots of changes there, Adam. It's, um, it seems that it's, it's going to be a, yeah, challenging for landlords and insurance companies to get around this. Um, but thanks for the update. Um, to the people watching to the end, I uh, hope you didn't enjoy that update. It's probably the wrong word, but you probably were educated a little bit about what's happening. We'll be covering topics like this throughout the year. Uh, if there's anything specific you'd like us to talk about, Adam and I are happy to chat about a few different things. Give us a shout out. The, this video will be on our website, rhgtown.com.au. There will be a link to the Fair Trading website where you can download a fact sheet if you want it, further information. Um, other than that, I'm Jared. This is Adam. Thanks for watching.